Okay, uh, so before I get started, I just want to jump in with a couple of points. Uh, one is, if you want a good sort of short review uh, of, of both the rules and of the game itself, with more insight into the game than I have, far more plays, uh, Clawlon uh, with Left Hand Reviews did a very excellent one. I got to look at that. And I, I realized one thing that I misrepresented in the rules. I, this is not a big deal. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's a big deal in the rules. But when you cap something, not only does it cost you uh, the five uh, resources, but it costs you all the pieces that you have there. So you have to have a majority of the pieces in the location, uh, and it costs all of them to cap it. And I believe they're actually all gone from the game. I'm not positive of that. I think they all just sweep away. Um, yeah, they go into the box. And this is important because something else I didn't mention. This little guy is worth a three. In any control fight, he's worth three. He counts just like our normal guy under normal circumstances. You got one of them, and you can use him on the board, uh, you know, to give you a little more weight in the, in the places you're going. All right. And, well... See, I haven't played with the uh, auctioning at all, but essentially it looks like you auction off uh, a set of tiles each time, but that's, that's kind of odd. Someday I'll play with it. All right, let's, uh, let's get started here. Is there anything that's set up? Nope, I don't think anybody starts on the board. You start by building and bringing people on. So, let's kick off a first turn here. And we'll go counterclockwise, as I always do in the playthrough. Draw the topmost hexagon and place it on the board. So Red's going to pick this, and he gets another one-pointer. Now, we got a full boat of people on the board. There's no real clear advantage one way or another. I'm going to put this here because that expands out into the middle of the board and maybe opens things up a little more. Eh, we'll put it over here to create more uh, chaos on that side of the board. Oh, I don't know if I can put a step going off the board. Let's see what my placing rules are. They're placed adjacent to one that has already been explored. And they must be placed so they can be reached. There must be a stone leading to the new one. Okay, so there's no penalty to putting that stone down there. So let's do it this way. Because what we're going to do is we're going to expand into this direction. Now, in order to do this, somewhere I ought to be keeping count of my pips that I'm spending, especially as I'm talking to myself. So I'll take out one of my trusty 10-siders. And there is definitely a problem in this game with, you know, you want to let people do things, especially the first time they're playing. You want to be able to take things back, etc. But sometimes it's very hard to remember what you're going across in terms of that. So now, you know, let's say I spend these two. That's two, four. I've just spent four more. I spent two to bring them on the board, four more to do that. So now I'm at six. Okay, and why is it four? It's one, two, one, two. Um, now what if I didn't want to bring this guy? Well, I have to undo him and figure out the points there. But I'm gonna just keep going. And you know, there's a couple ways to play it. One is, you do things, you can't take them back. And that's a, a probably the best. And maybe put a time limit on people's play because otherwise you can really get frozen trying to figure everything out in this game. I'm gonna try to play very rapidly without thinking too much because I think it's just more fun that way. Um, all right, so now I can dig and that costs me two each. So I'll dig two levels. 
I, I had six points, so two more levels gets me to my ten. So I put down a level two. Wow. There's a very limited number of level twos. That's because there are very few level one pyramids here. And a level three. Now this doesn't really necessarily do me much. But you gotta do something during your turn. <laughs> now I go to the white player. You know, I mean, what else was I gonna do? Maybe spread my pieces out? I don't know. I go to a player uh, two, and I pull one out. And he's gotten a better pyramid here. And he's going to want to place that. He's going to throw it like this, making it harder for the red player to cross across. It's going to be three movement for him to cross across. And I'll do the same kind of thing. I'll spend two quick movement points on dropping those there. And then two more to move. Two more to move again. So that's two, four, six I've spent. And the same place where I spent a move, uh, two movement points to put a three down and two movement points to put a four down. And now I've kind of claimed this, which, you know, other players don't have to respect that, but they can. Now we go over to the orange player. And there's sort of a, a even, even within you know, this competitive framework of a game. And this game does have a, a significant amount of player interaction for a, a Euro. Um, there is still sort of a feeling that, eh, that's his stuff, I shouldn't go there. I'm attacking him by doing that, right? So, you know, you can build up your own little area of the board for a while. So now we're on the orange player, and he's pulled a treasure. Treasures are cool in a place like this. One, two, three, I've spent. There's going to be a treasure marker on top of that. That I didn't put there. Oh wait, what? There's four? What's up with that? There are four treasure markers on top of there, aren't there? I believe so. Which means you can dig for multiple treasure. Let's see. And yeah, yeah, those of you who aren't used to my style, you're going to, uh, yeah, there's a number of them equal to that. So there's going to be four there. Now, I can't dig all four up this turn, but that's okay. So I spent three to get there. Digging a treasure costs me three more. So that puts me to six. Now what's cool about treasures as opposed to building these? I don't know who's gonna own these. This is mine though. I've got this thing. Uh, <laughs> and they're face up once you get them. Okay, now this guy can't dig another treasure there. I can send another guy in there though. But that would take me more movement. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna place another guy. That puts me up to seven. eight, nine, ten. Putting me in a position to move into any of these locations. Now we're on black, and black gets to play a tile, and he too gets a treasure. Now his treasure is getting him further and further afield, and he's got to decide what he wants to do with that. So for example, he could throw it down here and continue pushing on the same way that uh, orange is. Alternatively, you could spin it like this and say, hey, only I am going to get to this treasure easily. Uh, or he could go compete with one of these territories. And perhaps, you know, run through there and be in his own little location. I kind of like this one. It puts me out further into the world. But this is just as cheap. See, but these treasures are cheaper. Yeah, I'm going to give myself the same advantage as Orange had. I'm going there. One, two, three, 
four, five, six to dig the treasure. Seven, eight, nine, ten to dig a treasure off this space. I can dig off two different spaces. So I've pulled myself two little treasures fairly easily on my turn, which is kind of the bonus of having done it that way. And now we keep going around. Kind of a tough game not to kind of go into all the details of it because there's very little to the story. You know, I mean, largely it's making these decisions and the point counting and, and all that. <laughs> like a card game or a lot of other Euros. It's, it doesn't mean it's not fun for me, uh, e even though I usually like things with more storyline. But it does mean that I'm not sure what to do with the video except just play it out. Uh, let's go to the red player again. And I, obviously this is not gonna be any kind of optimal play or anything. So here I have kind of a nice tile, which I have some options on. One that I like is putting this this way. Red is already expanding into this direction. This gives them a cheap tile to move into with some points on it. So let's score some more location. Not that we're really scoring anything here, but if we move one, two, Now digging costs two each, three, four, five, six. And what am I accomplishing? Jeez, I don't know. But I am moving myself away from where other people can come in. So that's six, seven, eight, nine. And I'll put another guy down for 10. Could I have gone and grabbed that? Well, let's see, seven. Eight, nine, I couldn't grab a treasure, but you know, that might be more valuable to me. Not focus on my one area. Just put myself in treasure land because I'll be able to grab some of those. They're kind of a valuable thing. Now we go over to the white player. All right, now this is an interesting piece. For one thing, I could slap this out somewhere that's valuable, pay five and throw one of my tents down there and have sort of a jump on the midsection of the board. Of course, these are going to clear out at some point, but as of right now, there's a lot of points here. I'm not terribly thrilled with what's going on here. I certainly don't want to put it here because this isn't my world, or this is my world, and it doesn't really help me terribly, except to get me into that uh, thing. So why don't we do that? We'll spend five of our actions to drop this into place. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten to dig ourselves a treasure. I like treasures. And I got like some little golden beads or something. All right. Over to the orange player. And now we're in the bees. And I bet you there's a volcano in the bees, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I got another temple. Again, not a terribly valuable one. But what happens... If I put that here, this seems to be the direction I'm heading. It doesn't hook up to the white. It hooks up to this, which is, you know, there's some white pieces there, but that's okay. I'm not too worried about that. What I do want to do, though, is one, two, three, four, grab myself more treasure. Five, six, seven, eight, more treasure. Hmm. Nine, ten. I'm unlikely to get more treasure from here, so I'm just kind of pushing myself further outward into where the more valuable things are right now. And that puts it to the black player. And he found a pile more treasure. Well, this is kind of sweet for him. Now the problem with treasures, of course, is once you take them, then there's nothing there. Of course, there's room to put a tent then, but it means that your guys who are taking them are not right in the riches area in terms of the scoring. And we are in a period of time where scoring might happen soon, but I like building up those uh, treasures. So here, three. Can I get one of these? That isn't anything useful. Oops, I forgot to put my treasures down. Four, 
four, five, six, seven. Got a whole bunch of different treasures. Maybe I want to trade some uh, in order to pair up. You can't steal a pair from me. Great, I can't remember what I did. Three, four, five, six, seven. Let me put my number down because while I'm talking, I can't remember. Um, I got three more points. Three more points isn't enough to really do much of anything at this time. Uh, I can't dig here again, but for three, I can trade treasures. And I see someone else has one of the treasures that I have. What if I give him something that I don't terribly want that no one else has for that? And that puts me up to 10 moves. And that closes out that cycle around. All right, we're moving on to red. You know, it's kind of funny though. Time to take a little aside. Yeah, I know my introductions aren't terribly good uh, in terms of giving you the rules to a game. Um, and, or much of anything, really, quite often. But uh, <laughs> they're really useless if you don't watch the playthrough because, you know, I find things out throughout the playthrough and let you know. All right, on to red. Okay, now this is an even nicer uh, location. Now the question is, do I want to keep building up things or push deeper and deeper into the world? I like the deeper and deeper attitude. But maybe not too far. In particular, I'm expecting something to go soon. I don't see anybody getting to either of these anytime soon. So one. Um... Two, three. Actually, hold on. How about one, two? This is the clever way to do it. Three. Four, five. Now this guy, six, seven. And I'm scoring a lot of points on that already. And nobody's really near this. Six, seven. 8, 9, 10. I'm positioning myself so that I can score these three pyramids because I have the maximum people on there. Now there's a limit to how many pyramids you can cap if I recall correctly. Uh, you can only cap two pyramids over the course of a game. Which is a reason why I don't just cap two of these here. I want to optimize them, get them as high as I can. This guy's a 6. Maybe I can get him to a 10 and get the cap on there. Of course, the longer and more effort you put into building something up, the better it is to steal it. And, well, people will be tempted to go after that now that it's richer. We got the volcano. That doesn't get played right away. Instead, white gets to quickly take 10 action points to kind of grab things that they think will be useful at the beginning and optimize their points. Okay, I've got this pretty much guaranteed, so I'd like to build it up. So for four quick points, I'm gonna just up that. Now I could go five, six, or I could bring more pieces into play. So here's my question. I could go five, six, seven, eight, nine, grab myself a gold, and then 10, get myself a piece. And I think that's what I want to do. Five, six, Seven, eight, nine. This is only worth a point, but I'm not going to get much more than that by being here uh, for 10. And now I get to score my points. And my points are going to score based on my treasures. I get one point for that. And I can just mark these down here. There's one. I get six points for this big thing. And then I get one more point for this pyramid. And that's my scoring round, but everybody else in order is going to get one now. Ten actions and a scoring round. And then I get my normal turn after, during which I place this volcano, which is kind of a bone that I can put in somebody's way. 
because it's an impassable space. So over to orange, <coughs> they kind of want to optimize their points. Well, I like treasure with orange, so one, two, three, four. I don't double up yet. I may want to grab something from him. We'll see. Two, three, four. I've got this. I could steal this. Let's get my number down at four. Um, hmm. Five, six. And now the question is, do I build where I can get an extra two points? I'm at six. Or do I want to swap treasures where I get an extra two points? Swapping treasures gives me a longer term benefit. So I'm uh, at six, seven, eight, nine to swap. Now that only gives me one left, which I can't really use. I can bring something in, but there's nothing really exciting I can do with one point. But it gives me the same point value as I would if I increase this and this, which I can do. I've got one more point left. I'll throw an orange piece on the board. Nobody's thrown their big guy on the board yet. There hasn't been a lot of competition so far. Uh, let's go on. Oh, let's score my points. Okay, for treasures, this is one, two, and then three more for that. Puts me to five for orange. And then I pull in three, four locations. And now I don't know if I'm optimizing my points perfectly ever. Uh, I would rather play quickly than do so. I think it's a more enjoyable game that way. Okay, uh, on to black. Well, black wants to score points too. Now you get no opportunities to build new things and all these unclaimed pyramids are being grabbed up. So there's no quick opportunity to say grab something here, but there is a quick opportunity to grab another treasure for three. And unfortunately, I lost a pairing and I could have made a trade and gotten more. Uh, there is a trade available there though, which I may make, it's pretty likely because that's two points. I'm probably not going to be able to beat two points on one piece just because I have to expand so deep. So let me trade him for three more. That puts me to six. And I'll give this piece of garbage to him for this pair up. Actually, I'd rather keep this and give him this because this guy's going to have options as to what kind of garbage to hand off to red. Okay, now I only have three more moves, and that's not going to get me anything. <laughs> uh, that's the problem here. So I could bring in two guys, say. But that doesn't really help. One, two, three. Putting something in one of these pyramids, which I could have also done, one, two, three, or one, two, three, wouldn't gain me any points. Now, I could make things harder on red. Why don't I do that? Because I'm worried about red's points right now. I'd rather hose them out of points. So one, two, three. Oh, wait, no, I have four points, right? Three and six, so I can take something away. Okay. Four points doesn't help either <laughs> because it costs me three each to get in there. So four additional points. Hmm. One, two, three, four. Ah, oh, I can do better. I can bring in my big guy. It costs the same as bringing in another guy. So now for points, I score, I have two pairs and a single, six, seven. 
off those and another three off this pyramid here. And I've scored quite well actually off of this initial setup. Um, and what's kind of nice is these guys are going to score me throughout the game, right? Whatever treasures you dig up are good for a while, for the whole game basically. And if you dig them early, you get good points early and you get points that just keep giving to you. Uh, that's going to put it on red. Red's going to get a, a quick 10 points of actions. And let's see what they want to do. Well, they have these two claimed. I would love to get this. That probably isn't too hard. There's a treasure down here that maybe I could get. But let's make sure that we get this and this. Uh, one, two to get here, one, two, but three to build the guy. <sighs> this may not be as important as a treasure, I don't know. A treasure's likely only going to be worth one point, because I can't guarantee that I'll have a trade mix. So, do we give up the treasure? One, two, three, four, five. That's going to cost half my points. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I'm not going to have enough points to get this and the treasure. So I'm not going to go for the treasure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That'll get me this uh, tower. 6. I need my big guy. 6, 7, 8. And now I can grow some things. Well. Nine ten. What do we get for points? We only get one for treasures, but we've got all four of these pyramids, and they're worth nine, fifteen, twenty points, putting us way in the lead here. At this point, White says, "Wow, I do not like red. <laughs> I really don't like red. I'm going to make it harder for red by blocking off that." Uh, exit that he's got there. That doesn't guarantee anything. Red can make a way out this way or maybe they'll have their own little uh, enclave down there. Now that was White's uh, tile play. Now they get to actually play their pieces which means they get 10 more actions. Those 10 actions points well it's not clear that I'll win a fight here. It's not clear I'm going to win a fight anywhere. This, I'm waiting to draw tiles that'll help me for, with it. So I think what I want to do is kind of build up my productive capabilities, as it were, by throwing some pieces down. I could cap something if I thought this was, uh, if, if I could build this up high enough, I might cap it. One, two, three points to move there. Three points to move another guy. That's six points. Capping it costs me five. Uh, probably not worth it. It's probably better for me to build, work on building something up over here. So, let's start moving pieces. Oh, there's a treasure down here. One, two, three, four. I want that because what I'm looking at is just throwing a big pile of guys in there for the other six moves. Why? I think cool stuff shows up more later in the game. So, uh, you know, I'm positioning myself to take advantage of that and have a lot of workers right in this area. Of course, somebody can bone that strategy. Uh, by playing bad tiles, not necessarily volcanoes, but maybe another blank uh, in that general area. Okay, um, that puts us on to orange, and there aren't going to be any volcanoes for a while, and orange gets a blank tile. Well, a blank tile is kind of interesting. Now, I don't remember if, you have, if a tile has to be accessible when you play it. I believe so.
Yeah, expeditions must be able to reach it. So I couldn't just place this, say, like this and say, oh, there's a dead place. I could, however, place it up here and say, well, there's a place that red has problems with because someone could come in and take red land easily by putting a, uh, a flag there. Alternatively, I could screw over white's plan. <sighs> or I could screw over white's plan and make white's plan my own plan. There's something kind of attractive about that. Uh, which is to throw this here. It's still accessible. Five. I don't see any real reason to go after any of this stuff. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm building up my own pool of workers up there. Now that puts it on black. And black two draws one. And they could continue this path. Wee! Only problem? Well, uh, there is a bit of a problem, which is that the only thing this guarantees back to is here. Now, black doesn't have anything tremendous they want to do. They could fight red over here um, and maybe even cap off some, one of these at a high value for the rest of the game. That combined with their treasures does not sound terribly bad. How much would I need? I would need to get mm, a decent amount of people into here. But it feels almost as though that is my fighting zone. And what could I put here? Well, I can kind of do this anyway because it screws up orange and fight on the red zone. Let's do it that way. Okay. So what I want to do here is I want to go for one of these two. This one's very accessible to everyone. This one not so much. So if I put one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven. I don't have control yet. Eight, nine, ten. What have I done here? I've built this up. I've put a strong claim on it. Now, red can still fight me for that. There's no question about that. No one else really can. But that strong claim is kind of uh, laying down a marker on it that, yeah, I'll be able to build this up and then maybe push further in. If Red wants to fight for this, they can, or they could go for the one that they're already in pretty good shape on. We'll see which way they go. Um, I don't know if my numbers made sense. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine to build it, and ten to move in. Yeah. Um, so, Red will have the option to maybe build this up fairly strong, but one of the things you want to do is pull out as many pieces as you can before you cap something. So, right here, I could get this up to uh, on Red's turn, and we'll see if what they do. For four, I can get this up to an eight. And eight's pretty good. If I cap that for five more, that's nine points. That kills one of these two pieces and one goes on top. And I've got a really good rich position. And I could still fight for this one uh, with black. Alternatively, we can see what the tile means because we're on to the C tiles now. I'm gonna load this one up because it's gone fairly long. And I don't want these videos to be each humongous 